Welcome. We're glad to see you by internet this morning as we gather to worship. I'm extremely sorry that we could not conduct our first drive in church worship service with the necessary equipment to carry that off, which we were expecting to come in Friday. We will not be here till Tuesday. So our hope and prayer is the equipment will be in and we will have our first drive in church service next Sunday, April 5th. Over the next several weeks, we've been called to stay at home by the mayor and also understand by the governor. I hope that you are able to observe this ordinance as close as possible. If we have checked with the Durham One Call and with an attorney concerning driving church, both tell us that it is perfectly legal as long as we stay in our cars and practice safe social distancing. Please come to the driving services, but please know you At this time, our Easter cantata has been canceled. The choir, of course, cannot gather in practice, or we will certainly probably more than likely not be able to meet as large groups by Easter. Uh, but we will have our 11 o'clock service on Easter, not the sunrise, not our breakfast, and not Sunday school, but we will have 11 o'clock service either by the internet, by in church, and God willing, by miracle, in person. At this time, all the activities of Yes, Road Baptist Church have been canceled until further notice. This includes our revival prayer meetings and also our upcoming revival is scheduled to begin the first weekend of May. I know it does not seem right to not attend church, to be in God's house on the Lord's day, to worship and to fellowship with our brothers and sisters in Christ. As this separation cannot be helped at this time, let us just dwell in the fact that God is with us no matter where we are. God is there. Also dwell on the fact that we will be back together at God's appointed time. One of the first things that we're going to do when we're able to get back together as a body is have a baptism. Miss Catherine is still waiting to be baptized, and that will be one of our first services. What a way to start back to have the baptism of the new believers. We have a lot, as you said earlier, to look forward to. We have a lot to be thankful for, also, as God has blessed us. So let us hold to our faith faithful to God as he is faithful to us even at this time. I have to thank our entire church staff for all that they're doing and willing to do to help you, the RBC, at this time. Please be in prayer for our staff at this difficult time. It's hard to stay home. It's hard not to do ministry, but our staff is hindered by the rules. Although our staff is not in the office, we can still have hard at work with our youth and college students with online Bible studies and such. Tom is faithfully showing up, collecting the mail, and taking care of the business of the church. Miss Tom, uh, Miss Joyce, rather, continues to help with our newsletters and so forth and correspondences. And uh, Norman is hard at work in preparing for our first drive-in church service with the music for that. We're truly blessed to have such a dedicated staff. I hope that you will say a special thank you to Dick, for without him we would not be able to carry on site, much less the driving church. He is a very blessed gift to us at this time as well. I hate to bring up one topic, yet it is a topic that must be addressed, and that is the topic of finances. No, we're not meeting together, but the needs of the facility and staff are still continuous. I want to say thank you to all who have been so faithful in giving and supporting the church over these uh, past few weeks, and ask that you continue to be faithful to God and church. God has placed us each one here and gifted each one of us and we are all needed. So please support the church as God enables you and as you are blessed by your church. This morning we're blessed to hear Nick preach. Uh, he is planning to preach the fifth Sunday of this month for several months now. And I know that God has given him a message that we need to hear at this time and we're looking forward to hearing what he has to say to us. But as we prepare our hearts for worship, let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Father in heaven, we want to thank you for Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior and Lord. We want to thank you, dear Father, that through your Son, Jesus, we have salvation that is secure, and that it is salvation that will lead us to the hope being fulfilled today. We ask, dear God, that you bless this time, this time of worship. 
We ask, dear God, that you be with me, that you bring us your word. We pray, dear Father, for those that will hear him. We ask that your word will become alive in his heart and in our heart today. And Father, that as we hear what you have to say to us, dear Father, that it will be a word that not only speaks to the mind, but to the heart and changes it. We do pray for our body and our needs, and we pray for our nation in the pandemic. We ask, dear God, for us to respond correctly, and we ask, dear Father, that you continue to bless us. May we know that you are sufficient in all provision at every time of life, and even in the hardest times of life. So we call upon you, dear Father, in these days. Father, we ask all this in Christ Jesus, holy name. Good morning. So today um, we've come together in the midst of what everyone is calling unprecedented times. Due to this situation, we've again come together via the blessing of technology. We hope to be together next week with Drive-In Church with another piece of cool technology and an FM transmitter coming to us next Tuesday, hopefully. I know for all of us, these times are confusing. And I know for a lot of us, we are having so many feelings that at this point, we don't even know what to feel anymore. Waking up each day when we're stuck in a house, we start to lose track of what day it is. We start to lose a little of the fellowship we have because we're not meeting together. I know for a lot of you guest road members, this is concerning to you as we haven't been together in two weeks now. And times are so uncertain. I know for a lot of you that are just joining us here online that maybe your times are uncertain also. For me, it's uncertain because, well, I've been furloughed at my other job in the last day. And I never thought in a million years I'd be filing for unemployment, but here I am. These days, it's a lot harder to be positive. This morning, I feel a word from the Holy Spirit to bring you in the form of a little bit of clarity. Last week, Dan preached on the message of hope. This week, a message of clarity from me. For all of us, I feel like that's all we need. Clarity. Clarity from the media, clarity from the government. But for a lot of us, we are at this point just needing clarity from God. This morning, I have a message of clarity from the Lord. When I was in school beginning my journey through ministry, I remember coming across Psalm 62. It's been my favorite chapter in the entire Bible ever since then. David's penmanship is incredible in the first portions of it, but for today, I want us to focus on Psalm 62, verses 5 through 8. So if you have a Bible, please turn there now, or if you'd like to read along on the screen, that's fine also. Psalm 62, verses 5 through 8 says, Let all that I am wait quietly before God for my hope is in him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress where I shall not be shaken. My victory and honor come from God alone. He is my refuge, a rock from where no enemy can reach me. O oh, my people, trust in him at all times. Pour out your heart to him, for God is our refuge. Let us pray. Dear God, in these times of uncertainty, we are certain of one thing and one thing alone, and that's you. And it's in these moments that we look to you for some clarity on these situations in our world and a little hope. In your name we pray. Amen. David's description of God during these verses is a perfect description of our time right now. A fortress. That word means a person or a thing not susceptible to outside influence or disturbance. In school, I'm sure all of you remember tornado drills where you'd go into what they deemed a safe place and you would huddle together on the floor, whether it be in a hallway, whether it be in a really safe school room, or... In my case, we went to the bathroom. So they said that they would keep us safe. You'd get on the floor, you'd put your arms over your head, and you'd just crouch down. What's interesting is we know how strong of a fortress God is. It's much stronger than any school hallway or bathroom during a tornado drill. This morning, we are looking at the pieces of a fortress. The first piece we're going to look at is patience with hope. Patience with hope. David's clear here that patience is needed during these times. We all are probably a little tired of sitting around the house. I, for one, am more upset about no sports being played right now, but these times call for patience. If you look at verse 5, David even goes as far to say, let all that I am wait quietly before God. Let all that I am. All of us, I'm sure, have probably talked to God a time or two during this. But in those prayer times, have we been patient at any point and just waited for him to speak? Patience during these times are what is going to keep us going what's going to keep this fortress going. We must not rush God's process of recovery and healing. We must be patient and wait for him to move and work. David goes as far as to say that his hope is in him. This morning, let all that you are 
wait patiently for God to move. Place your hope in him. This fortress that God is, it features patience with us. God's been patient with us on many occasions in our lives, but during these times, let us place our patience in him, like we should have been doing a long time ago. We all want answers and clarity now, but in reality, he's telling us to be patient and have hope. As a believer, as hard as it may be to understand, being patient and having hope is as much clarity as we need. The second piece of a fortress is victory with faith. This may be my favorite characteristic and my favorite piece of this fortress, as even in these midst of these times, God is still victorious. Verse 7, my victory and honor come from God alone. Your victory through these times is not going to come from a stimulus package. It's not going to come through sports like I want it to. Though those things may be nice, my victory at the end of the day is not going to come from those things. My victory is going to come from Jesus. This fortress that we're in is the safest one, but it's also the only guaranteed one. I know for a lot of us, we question what's going on in these times. We wonder how things like these could happen. So we doubt. I read one time that I want God to wrap me up in everlasting wings and say, they're there, it's all right. And that cosmic affirmation of, yes, I know it's terrible. I know it hurts, but be patient. It's going to work out. I'm not going to lose. I'm going to win. It's all right. And that's the basic affirmation that I only think that true doubters can come to. Isn't that true? We just want God to wrap, up, uh, wrap us up during these times and say, hey, you know what? It's all right. I love you, and we're going to win. During these times, while we're patient and hopeful, we must also know that God is going to win at the end of the day. I know these times are difficult and uncertain. I'm with you all in that I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't know what's going to happen a week from now, but I know where my victory comes from. It comes from Jesus and only Jesus. David even continues by describing God as his refuge. This morning, do you have enough patience and hope to believe that your victory comes from him as your refuge? Back a long time ago, a Christian artist by the name of Lecrae, who's a Christian hip-hop artist, he penned a song called Far Away, which was a relief song for Haiti earthquake victims back then. The second verse of the song is honestly how we're feeling right now in this day and time. So Lecrae pins, Dear Hope, I've been waiting on you for a while now. I've been cut so deep that I ain't sure if I can smile now. Look at this devastation. Look at this pain and sorrow. Somebody fed me lies and promised me a bright tomorrow. I know the God I follow is bigger than disaster, big enough to handle any evil that harasses us. But I feel like he passed us. Pain overtook us. Buildings tumble overhead as the ground shook us. God, have you forsook us? Lord, are you still with me? I know you saved souls. I trust you to forgive me. Relief, can you hear me? Hey, rest, can you get me? Hey, peace, can you see me? Hey, love, can you heal me? I don't know what to do. I ain't looking for answers. I just need you to hold my hand through this cancer. Tell me you never left, even in the midst of death. Breathe on me. I'll do anything to fill your breath. I feel like at this part of the passage where he says that, oh, my people trust in him at all times. Trust is having faith. And I feel like faith is what's going to really keep us in this fight. We've been through so much the last two weeks. Millions of people don't have jobs. So much is happening so fast. But I'm still having faith. I love those last lines from that, that part from Lecrae. Breathe on me. I'll do anything to fill your breath. Friends, family, believers, non-believers, the only way we're going to get through this is faith. I love verse 8 because it's a couple, um, it, it's, it's, just, it's honestly just complete and utter transparency. As Lecrae shared here in, in that verse from his song, Oh, my people, trust in him at all times, which is also saying have faith. Pour your heart out to him. Be honest with him, for God is our refuge. This morning where you sit, you can make the decision to have faith in him. Whether it's your first time or your second or your fifth, there is no better time than right now. Your faith in him is the last piece of this fortress to me that is the most priceless. Without it, I'm nothing. Without it, all of this is worthless. So there it is, your message of clarity. The pieces of this fortress are so important to our journey during these uncertain times. Patience with hope and victory with faith. With these vital two pieces of our lives, we cannot fail during this. Please be patient and have hope. Please know that this victory is won and have faith in him with everything you've got.
this morning you can make that decision. Where you're at, it can be your time. I, like you, am ready for life to be normal again. But if we're honest, is life with Jesus really that normal? Life with Jesus is a roller coaster that's full of launches, drops, loops, dark tunnels, and adventure. This is just a dark tunnel. The best part of this journey is that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Be safe in your fortress. They tell us to quarantine, and, and you know, we can, but we definitely cannot quarantine the gospel right now. He's got you wrapped up, loving you, and taking care, and we are going to win. Let us pray. God, we thank you again for this time together. But above all else, we thank you for what you're doing in our lives. We are a little uncertain of what's next, if we're being honest with you. But it's in this moment that we trust your pieces of your fortress. Patience with hope and victory with faith. God, we hope and pray that these things can change our outlook on this situation. It's crazy times, but God, this did not take you by surprise. Lord, we trust you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I don't know what you're going through right now at your house. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if you're bored. I don't know if you're ready to just get out. But I know me. I love being in this place today with you. And I hope and pray that today you were encouraged. I hope last week you were as encouraged by Dan's message as I was. And I hope today you're as encouraged with that, with this message of clarity. A message of hope is so needed, but I know right now we need some clarity. We're all trying to figure out what's going on. Lord, I hope and pray, guys, I hope and pray that you figure this out. Because, to be honest with you, sometimes it's hard for me to. I hope that when next time we're here together, I hope we do drive-in church, and I hope it's going to be just phenomenal. So I hope you guys have a phenomenal week, and I hope you guys see you next week. Bye. Love y'all.